For those who are unfamiliar, this is Dutch Sheets. He is a televangelist of epic proportions, a nutter butter extraordinaire, of course. And he's on this TV show called Flashpoint. Now, Flashpoint is a, a, a show owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland on his TV network called The Victory Network. They just had Kirk Cameron on. This is not part one. If you haven't seen the other parts, don't sweat it. This stands independently of the rest. I'll provide context if it's missing. In the previous ones, they had Kirk Cameron on to say all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know what we're in, in store for with this one, but it's bound to be crazy. So let's give these people a listen and see what kind of unhinged stuff they have to talk about. All right. This is Gene Bailey uh, on screen here. He's like kind of the host or whatever. And we're going to be playing Breath of the Wild while we listen to Gene Bailey spread his nutter buttery all over everything. Hey, we're back for the second half of Flashpoint. I said before the break, we're going to talk about uh, things that are going right. So I, I want to show you this. This past, was it this past weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, Disney released a movie, Strange World. Uh, it bombed at the box office. Oh, I heard that there was some kind of a weird Disney protest going on right now. I, I think that this is what it's all about. I was unclear on what that was all about. Strange World? I've never heard of it, and I don't know what their weird obsession is with Disney or why they even care. Like, move on with your lives. If it bombs at the box office, hey, there you go. That's all you need to worry about. It, they faced the social consequences that they deserved for doing something people didn't like, right? Why do they always have to, like scream and cry about being persecuted by Disney. It's not, they can't just leave it at Disney sucks. They have to take it a step further. It's nuts. They didn't do advertising right for the movie, right? I, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what happened with this movie, but let's keep listening here. There's a gay character in it, according to Kitty Mom, okay? In the first five days, uh, and this has the first movie that actually has an openly gay character as the lead, if I have that right. Um, <clears throat> so, not that I want somebody to do bad, but I do want Disney and I want these companies to wake up uh, instead of being woke up, be you know wake up to what Americans are really looking. So this, wow, that was a really interesting thing for him to say, wasn't it? Not that I want somebody to do something bad, but I do want Disney to wake up. What an interesting thing to say. Deeply disturbing on so many levels. So here's the thing about this TV show and Glenn Beck and Bill O'Reilly and many, many others. Tucker Carlson. They have all been directly responsible for terrorist action taken on various different organizations or, or people. He knows what he is capable of. He knows what he's capable of. Right. This guy does. And that's why he says that. That's why he qualified it in the first place. That being said, I do actually think that he wants somebody to do something bad. I mean, he's basically said whatever it takes, whatever it takes to wake people up to blah, 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 whatever. I mean, he gave like, a, I don't know, 17 minute sermon a few months ago, basically telling people that it's time to get your ARs and do something to change things violently. That's pretty much what it was. And it was one of the most disturbing talks I've ever listened to. I even covered it on my main channel at the time. If you feel like you have to qualify things like this constantly, you might be the problem. This is a great example of people saying, no, I'm not going to take my kids to that movie. No, that's not acceptable. And you can change CEOs all you want. We're not going to, we're not going to suddenly change our, our beliefs, our values. Uh, Great. Fine. You don't have to. Like, no one is requiring that this guy go. He's acting as though this is a legal requirement. You are legally required to show up to this movie, watch it, and enjoy it. And if you don't, then you can be put in prison for it. That's how he's acting right now. Come on. This one really bothered me. Uh, the actors, this is why Americans cannot make actors 
people you live your life after. Don't form your life after an actor. And I like. I agree. I agree. That's actually a really good point. You shouldn't do that. That's not healthy. It's not smart. Don't don't do that. This actor. But look what Jake Gyllenhaal had to say about how every movie should be. Watch. How amazing a Disney animated film with a queer son who is just queer. Yes. Not coming out. Not coming, it just is. I mean, I think what's so great is like they normalize the normal. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just is what it is and how we are. And to me. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. They normalize the normal. That's a really good way of putting it. I like that. I mean, that's our world. I mean, it's a strange world we live in, but 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 I think that's what's so beautiful about this. And that was actually just that was told to me very, very early on. And I thought that's so beautiful. That's exactly how every movie should be. No, it's not how every movie should be. Uh, it makes me want to reach through the screen and slap him. Uh, but what normalizing the normal? See, this is him. This is Gene Bailey normalizing violence. It seems like a little thing, but he is acclimating people to violence, getting them w more willing to accept violence in some cases. Deeply disturbing and wrong, man. Uh, like, it's just messed up, seriously. But Pastor Rob, uh, this, is, this is where Hollywood really gets off base because they get into a land into their own and they start believing each other and thereby we're so uh, revealed and you went away. <laughs> so, so let me go to, uh, although though you're back. I, so you understand what, what I'm saying here, Rob, this is Hollywood. I don't want to say at its finest because it's horrible, but this is why we. It's horrible for people to just normalize the normal. Are you kidding me? We cannot depend not just on mainstream media, we can't depend on Hollywood for our value system. Right. We can't. Uh, the, the idea that, that they're producing a movie that nobody wants to buy should resonate with them, but Hollywood makes movies about their own lives. They don't make movies about the lives of Americans in general. Uh, they look at us as the flyover states, meaning those that would hold conservative principles. And, and they don't realize that's their bread and butter. Uh, and they want to indoctrinate our children. And, you know, when I was with Sean Foy protesting out in front of Disney, uh, the folks that showed up, and this was during the week when everybody's working and we've got a lot to do and it's not easy to get to downtown Burbank and protest. But the crowds that showed up and the police officers were thrilled we were there. They were clearing the streets. Everyone's tired of it. And that's why you had a change in the CEO at Disney. That's why they're. Okay, I don't know what reason there was to change the CEO of Disney. That sounds like an assumption to me. Their numbers are tanking. Um, Their numbers are not tanking. Like, see what, it, this is exactly like Donald Trump. They have to make it out as though everybody is failing if they don't do exactly as you want them to do. It's just embarrassing, man. Like, get over yourself. Um, folks, when you start messing with your with our kids... Then, then people awaken. Like, nobody's messing with your kids. What are you talking about? Because where your treasure is, your heart is also. And for many people, their treasures are children. Um, so I, I, Disney's just off the rails, and they're, they're going to be losing more and more and more money. And Americans are starting to want more wholesome entertainment. I truly believe that. I think folks are sick of this. I think there's going to be this awakening that Dutch is speaking of. I'm, I'm excited about it. I've, I've never been more optimistic, and I'll close with this. Winston Churchill said the man was cursed to have been born in uninteresting times. And that's not the case for us. We are, no. We're alive in the most exciting time. Amen. And I'm thrilled. So there will be an awakening and a revival. Amen. All right, you know, let me show you this, uh, Dutch. I want to show you this. This is from the, the Writers Guild of America had a Zoom conference. And I know you probably can't read that. The, the underlying part, this, this whole thing is about... Uh, reinterpreting legacy characters in a new queer light. So they're talking about taking some of movies that have been out for a long time and, and comic book heroes and they, who is they like, who is talking about that? The writer's guild of America. Is that what he pointed out there? Is that even real? What did it say? Let's just step back a little bit and look, hang on 3827. I mean, is this real or did they just make this up completely? This panel will bring together LGBT writers and film and TV executives 
to discuss the process of adap- adapting comic book intellectual property for film and television with the focus on breathing life into queer characters, either those already queer on the page or reinterpreting legacy characters in a new queer light. Moderated by Eric Anthony Glover. Panelists include writers James Tinian IV. Something is killing the children. I have no idea who set this up or if this is even legitimate or what's this even from? It doesn't have any, like watermarks or like um you know letterhead or anything on it is this just some random zoom meeting where did they even find this does it say writers guild of america anywhere on this i'm not seeing any indication that it's actually even from this yeah and also i don't know any of these people or what this is or whatever uh and and i also don't know if the organizers of this have any power at all in society it's a very real possibility that these people are just nobodies basically whoever actually wrote this and they're just you know they're trying to affect change little by little which is you know how activism works i have no idea what these people are talking about naturally light so they're talking about taking some movies that have been out for a long time and and comic book heroes and reintroducing them is like, you know, I don't know if they're going to say Superman was gay or whatever, but I mean, this is the level of what they're wanting to do. So who is they? Who is he talking about? Give us specifics. He said the Writers Guild of America. Is that even from the Writers Guild of America? Is it from anybody high up? I don't know. I can't tell. I, I, I totally agree with what Rob, Pastor Rob was saying. But we have to somehow, we can't change that if we continue to go to those movies or we continue to buy those products and buy those videos. And you know, some people... Okay, then don't buy those things. Don't watch those movies. Simple as that. He doesn't want to stop there. He wants to take it a step further and go completely over the top with absolutely everything he says and does. He wants to like mobilize people and weaponize them and do to get them to do something crazy. Basically, he can't just leave it nice. He can't just be like, oh, OK, well, we don't stand for gay marriage, but we stand for people's right to exist, you know. So let's just like move on with our lives and let whatever happens happen and make sure that our, you know, congregations know that we're not OK with gay marriage. Like that would be still an extreme position. But I I couldn't complain about it that much if they were just keeping to themselves and leaving everybody else alone. They have to take it an extra step and try to ruin everybody's life around them. It's nuts, dude. For the record, Jehovah's Witnesses do it that way. They're insular. They just keep to themselves, but they don't stand for gay marriage. I'm not okay with it in that case either. Uh, You know, Dutch just absolutely, well, you know, it's okay. And I'm talking about believers that I've known. Uh, go well, you know. We're just gonna go. You know, we like Disneyland. We're gonna go or Disney World, and 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 they. What a travesty! People actually enjoy enjoy Disneyland, and they go to Disneyland. That's wrong, right? Continue to put money in exactly the opposite values of what we stand for, and I think that's been the most disturbing thing to me that I've seen out of this whole Disney thing. Yeah, I've not re- never really understood the unwillingness of believers to make a stand with the purse. I've never sponsored a boycott. I- I've never preached boycotts. Yeah, what happened to free speech? I thought everyone was in favor of free speech, right? Suddenly not so much, I guess. But I have boycotted. When I see a group of people that do not represent and even oppose my values, CC and I many times have made a stand and said, we won't support this anymore. Uh, uh, and I, I just think we've come to a point where uh, that decision is gradually being removed, in a sense, from believers. Times are becoming so desperate and evil is becoming so blatant and in your face, and they are opposing what we stand for so much, it's forcing people to say the line has been drawn 
and I, I'm not going to cross, I'm not, there is light, there is dark, there's good, there's evil, there's truth, and there's untruth. You know, it struck, it struck me as the, the, the man you played the clip talking about Norm, this is normal. And yet, the, uh, I, I, years ago, I did a teaching on truth. And, and Jesus said, I'm the truth, and that's what will make you free, the knowledge of the truth. But that word means the reality, aletheia in Greek, the reality that existed and exists in the original norm. There is. Dude, I'm having a lot of trouble with this puzzle. I'm sorry, guys. Give me a minute to figure out how to do this exactly. I don't remember how this is done. I know it has something to do with cryonis though what is it i thought that you used cryonis on that puppy right there but apparently not you can't raise that up um you know how i've beaten it in the past i've cheesed it let me show you what i'm talking about i need this this guy right here i need that so i'm gonna take this puppy and drop him right here boom cheesed take that anyways okay let's let's keep listening is an original there is a norm there is reality and like it or not jesus said it's found in me and it's found in my words and that's the only thing that will make you free and so the church is going to have to get back to original norm we're going to have to get back to the basics all is not relative there is truth there are absolutes that's all very true a hundred percent absolutely yes that's accurate not all is relative but he wants to convince you that his quote unquote truths are the most accurate and truest of truths. It isn't relative. There are things that are absolutely true. That's true. Yes. But he can't just leave it at that. And we have to make a stand. We don't have to hate people. We don't have to be ugly about it. But he is anyways. I mean, he says you don't have to be, but he is. He is ugly about it. It's honestly deeply depraved how they act about people sometimes. We have to make a stand. We love our enemies. We would die for our enemies, but we will stand for truth. Amen, standing for truth. And that means in, uh, you know, who would have thought this thing called social media would have caused such a ruckus over the last three or four years uh, of what's happened and President, uh, you know, I remember when President Trump took to Twitter, like really, he's spending his time on Twitter? You know. I, it was amazing to me that the, the power that social media suddenly had. Of course, now, you know, recently the, the Twitter files, uh, Elon Musk dumped the first batch. And I think tonight there some of the second batch is being dumped of. Right. Twitter files. So the right desperately wants this to seem like it's a big thing. It's really not. It was nothing. It was just a bunch of Twitter employees discussing how they were going to, about, going to go about handling something that has political implications to it. And they handled it as in an, an as an, God, I'm going to get this out. They handled it in an unbiased way, as unbiased as possible, in my opinion. So, How the corrupt um, organization really was. It doesn't surprise any. Twitter was not corrupt. You know what I find fascinating? I mean, the old Twitter wasn't. I find it really interesting that in the Twitter files, they complain about Joe, the Joe Biden campaign basically asking Twitter to take down <laughs> pics of Hunter Biden. Like, who cares? That's against the law in many states anyways. And they just kind of gloss right over the fact that the Trump campaign specifically requested certain things be taken down. That is an actual First Amendment violation, an actual government entity asking a private company to censor speech. That is real censorship. But did we get any information on that one? Of course not. All that was said about it was the Trump campaign also requested information about or the Trump campaign also requested they takes this down or that down or whatever else. They didn't actually tell us what it was that they requested. Weird, huh? But it's the Biden campaign, not presidency campaign that was at fault, right? <sighs> These people are ridiculous. Any of us that have been <clears throat> banned, shadow banned, or canceled, um, I want to play this clip from Maria Bartiromo about the Twitter files. Watch. 
Joining me right now is the man charged with investigating. He is House Oversight and Reform Committee ranking member, soon to be chairman of the Oversight Committee, Congressman James Comer. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Thanks for having me. Your reaction to Elon Musk's? Well, thank goodness for Elon Musk. He's definitely the Grinch that stole the Christmas for the Democrat National Committee. And what for he's the, showing... For the DNC? Why didn't he just say DNC, first of all? And second, like, nobody really cares. You know, there was no wrongdoing on the part of the DNC. The DNC wasn't even involved in anything, for that matter. This is all just completely made up, but okay. Doing here is evidence that the Biden campaign uh, colluded with big tech to Biden, wait, did he say Biden campaign colluded with big tech? Press a story that we now know is 100% true. The, the problem the Democrats should have is, why were they so scared of the laptop story. They did not try to suppress the laptop story. Nobody tried to suppress the laptop story. They banned the New York Post from posting that for a single day and then lifted the ban the very next day. There was no collusion. There was no plotting along with the campaign or the government or the anybody else. It was just a single day of them cutting the story from the New York Post's Twitter account and then reestablishing it. It's completely made up. And the, the answer, Maria, is because the laptop proves evidence that not only did Joe Biden lie to the American people. About what? Are you kidding me? It, the laptop story proves Joe Biden lied to the American people? In what way? About what thing? What did he lie about? about his involvement with his family's influence peddling and shady business dealings. Okay, it does, the laptop does not show any kind of proof of that at all. There is no proof that Biden was involved in any shady dealings of any sort. Also proves that Joe Biden was a part of those shady business deals. No, it doesn't. And that's something every American should be concerned about. Well, this is really what I want to zero in on because Oh, I love how they're so anti-corruption, too. It does not show any of that shit. But don't you love how anti-corruption they are now that Trump is out of power? They're like the paragons of morality and ethics suddenly now that Trump is out. When Trump was in office, it was like, oh, you're worried over nothing. Oh, he's he's a good guy. He's not trying to hurt anybody or do anything wrong. Oh, his kids, you know, his kids know what they're doing. That's why they're involved in the White House. That's why they're sitting in for, like, the Secretary of Defense and stuff at meetings. No big deal. They know what they're doing. Suddenly, they are paragons of morals and ethics. Because I've been saying for uh, uh, years now that this is a Joe Biden story. This mm -hmm. is not a Hunter Biden story because right. what they were selling was access to Joe, right. whether he was a sitting senator or whether he was the vice president. No. Okay. They have no idea what they're talking about. There is a thing, though, I, I, that I feel is worth mentioning here. If I wanted to start, say, an oil company or something, right? Never started an oil company before, but I, I understand some of the basics. I would hire some people who know how to run an oil company. I would hire people who know how to run one, like who know how to run the, you know, do the accounting and how to run the rigs and all of that other stuff. But for the board, I would want to get somebody in who had connections to people who could get things done. So I wouldn't want to hire a bunch of oil executives if I were on the board, or I'm sorry, if I were running an oil company. You know who I'd want to get? I would want to get somebody who knew investors, who could get in contact with people who could get things done if I needed it. Like, for example, if I wanted to start an oil company, I would want to get, like, say, a senator on the board because a senator knows a ton of really high up people, right? I'm not asking him to abuse his position on my behalf. All I'm asking is for him to, like, if he knows somebody who knows what they're doing, or, or so, he, he knows somebody who has a lot of money, who might be interested in investing, or somebody who maybe he knows a lawyer that, that knows like the rules and regulations of this industry or something. You don't want oil executives 
on that board. You want people who know other people on the board specifically. Now, are you asking that senator to abuse their position and corruptly, like, get people to play ball with you by putting her on the board? No, you're not. You're not asking her to do that. All you're asking of her is to be on the board, and if she knows somebody who can solve a problem, let us know. That's it. That's all you're asking, right? They're making it out. That's what it was with Hunter Biden. He was on the board of an energy company or something in Ukraine like forever ago. They're making it out as though Hunter Biden was like corruptly involving Joe in their dealings and all this other stuff. That's not how it worked at all. Hunter Biden knew people. He had connections to people. He, In fact, Tucker Carlson even took advantage of those connections. Tucker Carlson got a recommendation, a letter of recommendation written from Hunter Biden for his son to go to a private school. So if you want to make it out like Hunter Biden was corruptly taking advantage of something or other, you have to accept that Tucker Carlson was also corruptly taking advantage of Hunter Biden and his position or whatever other thing. It is not, he wasn't selling his position with his dad or selling access to his dad. He was selling his connections to a ton of people, including but not limited to Tucker Carlson. You know, there are a billion people out there that this guy knows and that he's close to, not just Joe. Lots of high up people. That is why Hunter Biden was on the board of a Ukrainian energy company. It's completely understandable. Should we ban people from using their connections to get the get a job for themselves? Maybe. But it's really not that big of a deal, honestly. I really don't see it as big of as that big of a deal. If Joe was corruptly working with Hunter to do this thing or that thing, I might have a problem with that. That's not what was proven. That's not what was happening. Nobody has even implied that that's taking place. How long has this been going on? And and what did Joe Biden do? Was he just making believe he knew nothing about it, but but putting Hunter on on Air Force One? Right. Or did you catch what she just said? What did Joe Biden do or what did he know or whatever, right? Just asking that question means she doesn't have any link to draw. She has no connection to make here. There is nothing corrupt about what happened. Honestly, there is there is nothing corrupt that was revealed on the laptop or any of that. Or Air Force Two when he was vice president to go visit Chinese officials. It's more than Air Force Two. Joe Biden met with every person that he earlier said he never met. Uh, we have pictures. We have emails to prove it. What are they even talking about? Joe Biden met with people he claimed he didn't meet? I have no idea what they're referring to, first of all. And second, do you think maybe it's possible that Joe Biden met them later? After he made that claim? Do you think maybe he met those people later? And aside from that, he was vice president for a while. You really think that Joe Biden hasn't met with pretty much every world leader from from every country in the world? Uh, Joe Biden was actively involved. What the Biden family was doing was selling access to Joe Biden. Uh, that's the family business. No, they were selling their connections, just like everybody does, just like Donald Trump does, just like every single politician and defense secretary, cabinet member, and everything all the way down the line does. State legislatures, school board members, everybody does this. All right, so the Twitter files being released, we're tracking that as we go. But what's interesting with this since last week when the, uh, the first dump happened of all these files is how much this was not covered on mainstream media. In fact, let me show you a graphic. The day after that big landmark day for Twitter, uh, network news coverage of the informational Hunter Biden laptop, look how many times ABC, CBS, and NBC spent. Absolutely zero. Zero seconds was spent on that story. So let's go to the next day. Um, <clears throat> December 6th, legacy media is not a news source. It's a propaganda wing to the DNC. I believe that. Legacy media is, uh, what did he say? He said... Legacy media is not a news source. It's a propaganda wing of the DNC. And they list MSNBC, CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS. Those specific ones are not. But Fox News, where this is apparently coming from, this screenshot, you can see it in the corner, it most definitely is 
a propaganda wing of the Republican Party. No question about that. Now, CBS and ABC and NBC are not in any way the propaganda arm of the DNC. CNN used to run or carry water, I guess you could say, for the DNC a little bit. MSNBC is more left wing, not necessarily the DNC, but the first three listed there, no, not at all. I I would say ABC is pretty moderate, honestly. Uh, CBS, ABC, NBC, still nothing. MSNBC, three minutes. And look at that. That uh... Wait, what? Zero minutes. What are they even talking about? Oh, minutes that they talked about Hunter Biden's laptop literally the day later? I mean, this isn't like total coverage that they gave of the Hunter Biden laptop story. It's just the day after. Of course they didn't do it the day after. They want to fact check this stuff. Is that any surprise? Oh, these people aren't as politically corrupt and ready to rail about this story nonstop immediately after it happened, whether you fact check it or not. They're not as corrupt as to do that. So we're going to call them an arm of the Democratic Party. Big surprise, right? Is anybody surprised by this? CNN, who's scrambling for any viewers, uh, actually gave the story 10 minutes. Uh, You know, Rob, when we see this, I don't understand why we people are so committed to the woke agenda that sometimes it's it's shocking to me. I'm like, can't you see? Can't we open your eyes and see just what's really they're not even talking about what's really out there. There's nothing to talk about. There was nothing like crazy or special revealed in the Twitter files. It was just a bunch of people trying to keep political bias out of the decisions that they made for Twitter. That's it. There is nothing to it. Then the other part of that that has been shocking to me, but prior to the 2020 election, so many people knew nothing about the Hunter laptop uh, story at all before the election and said, now these were liberals, said they would probably not have voted that direction had they known that was even in existence. It doesn't matter what you think liberals said or would have done or whatever votes really make the difference and there's honestly nothing to learn from the laptop anyways it was pure russian disinformation the the whole laptop thing it was all russian disinformation i don't believe for a second that hunter biden left his laptop with a repair guy to have it repaired and then just never picked it up. And that laptop had happened to have like a bunch of like pictures of him, you know, doing all of this stuff or whatever. In my opinion, either Russia claimed that or Russia released a bunch of this information to Rudy Giuliani from hacked accounts of Hunter Biden's or Russia hacked a bunch of accounts and put all of this data on some generic laptop that didn't belong to him in the first place, but they made it look like it was Hunter Biden's. And then they gave it to this blind repair guy or dropped it off or had some guy drop it off. I mean, the guy who claims to have received it, the owner of the repair shop, says he's blind, so he couldn't verify if it was Hunter Biden who dropped it off or not. I mean, right there, that's suspicious on its own. The whole thing is just deeply, deeply suspicious. I don't believe any of it for a second. It looks exactly like a Russian disinformation campaign to me. But who knows? Maybe there really is a blind repair guy who has such bad eyesight he couldn't verify that Hunter Biden was the one that dropped it off. But it really was Hunter Biden after all. This is the point of social media, how this is, you know, this is uh, I remember stories of uh, radio was horrible to those uh, Christian evangelists that you know, plowed the, the way to be on radio and they were bashed by all the, all the, <laughs> the religious structure, the Sanhedrin of the day. And the same thing when the television came out, oh, you can't do the demon box there. And, you know, we have a tendency to be late to the game. However, that's true. They do. They have a tendency to be late to the game. Christians are hitting social media and that's a really good thing. But Rob, when we see this in Twitter, what should we do with all of that? Yeah, te- technology is neither moral nor immoral. It's amoral. Uh, and, and as Luddites, you know, if, if we're afraid of technology or the future, it puts us behind the curve because this is the innovation of man. That's true. It, it does. It puts them behind the curve if they refuse to use it. That's, that's fair. But suppression of speech, um, the truth is never afraid of a lie. 
but a lie can't survive in the presence of truth. And so they, they have to censor in order to put forward their lie, their propaganda. And so we've been banned for life from YouTube. We? Who is we? Does he mean him, like Pastor Rob McCoy was banned from YouTube? Because we took an alternative position on, on the vaccine. No, it's because you spread nonsense and lied about things nonstop. It's because you spread disinformation and made and freaked people out, whipped people into a blood frenzy over the vaccine. That's really why you were banned from YouTube. And, well, I, I, assuming what he's saying is true. And if that thing that he was saying is true, it was totally justified. Uh, we're banned for life. They, they don't want to hear any contradictory information. No, they don't want to hear any false information. Distinct difference there. Uh, they want to decide and they want to be the, the jury and the judge and declare what is going to be acceptable and not acceptable. Yeah, it's their platform. They're perfectly allowed to do that. But aside from that, they don't need to be the jury and the judge. This has already been established. Like we have facts and information about vaccines. If you come in and lie about them, naturally, you're going to get banned. Of course. They told you this before. Are you serious? You didn't know this? So I, I find it fascinating that are the greatest advocates for free speech are not the church. You got Peter Thiel, a homosexual male who put together the rumble deal to allow... Wait, is Peter Thiel gay? Okay, if you guys don't know who Peter Thiel is, he's this famous billionaire who... Okay, he's like... Um, Peter Thiel donates, like, a, an obscene amount of money to uh, right-wing causes, like far-right extremist causes. He built Rumble. He was an early investor in Facebook, I believe. That's where he got most of his money. He was on the board of Facebook for a long time, and now he runs Rumble. And he donates to, like, a bunch of far-right extremist causes, and including, I think, Donald Trump. Yeah, Peter Thiel is... Just a terrible person all the way around. But aside from that, is he gay? This is not something I was even aware of. Leave it to Flashpoint to fixate on something like this. Like, who cares? Honestly, who cares if the dude's gay? Flashpoint has to fixate on this. Ministers like myself to once again have access to live streaming. And that man invested an enormous more portion of his wealth to bring Rumble to a place where we could then communicate once again with the 50,000 followers we had lost on YouTube. Um, and, and so people, people value free speech, uh, but, but I, I, I want the church to value it even more because when they... People on the right do not value free speech, and the church values it even less than that, in all seriousness. They are not in favor of free speech. I mean, the people on Flashpoint, for example, never were. Never will be, I, honestly. I, I don't think they ever will be, either. We don't say anything. What we're saying is that the, the lie is more important than the truth, and we must contend against censorship. You're right. And, and All of this over the fact that he spread vaccine disinformation. Seriously. What an emotional guy. And th that's exactly the point. We have to stand up. Because uh, they will take what we will give them or what we won't stand up for. Look at this graphic here. Percentage of Americans who say they have a great deal or quite a lot of confidence in newspapers and television news. Now, to the left is 1995. To the right is 2020. That only goes through 2020. So look. Oh, check it out. Is this, I, I forget, I think this is a technique called p-hacking. Is that what this is? Let me look up p-hacking. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what this is. This is called p-hacking. p the letter P, dash, hacking. And uh, what we're looking at here seems st statistically significant, right, at face value. But why does the chart start at 45%? And why does it start at 1995? They just chopped off the top half of the chart because the fewer percentage points that you're dealing with, the more significant the change appears to be. Also, don't trust any of the statistics that they give you in this show. I believe that these people make it up more often than not. So I just don't believe a word out of their mouths. Look it up yourself, okay? Surveys of at least 1,000 U.S. adults conducted annually between 93 and 2022. Data from Gallup. 
out of curiosity, let's just look this up. Percentage of Americans who say they have a great deal. They have a great deal of, what was it? Or quite a lot of confidence in newspapers. From Gallup. Uh, media confidence ratings at record lows. Partisans confidence in newspapers. Is this the one? Confidence in newspapers and television news. Interesting. Why did they start at 60% for this one? That's kind of weird. But notice the... Okay. So uh, it appears as though this is the chart that they were looking at, right? Now, I don't know why Gallup started, decided to start at 60%. They should have had 0 to 100%, honestly. But look, the chart goes all the way back to 1972. So why did they start at 1995? Because that was a peak. That was a high point for television news, 1995. Wait, is this even real? Because in 1995, it was at 33%. No, this isn't even correct. No, look, so they said that it, it, they said that the chart starts at 1995. This chart actually starts at 1993. And the reason I say that is because television news is at its all-time record high of 46% that year. So they started it in 1993 because they wanted to make it really, really high. They wanted to make it look really, really high. And they put it at the very top of the chart here. They put it at the very top as though it's 100% because they wanted to, they wanted to make it seem as though this is a dramatic change. Now, it is a dramatic change, but they wanted to take it a step further than just showing an honest depiction of what's happening. They shouldn't have started at 60% with Gallup. They should have shown the whole 0 to 100% chart because they, you know, doing so is giving an inaccurate image of what's happening here. But it's not anywhere near as bad as what Flashpoint did. It seems like a little thing at face value. It's not. You know, you want to sail a ship from, say, Spain to Manhattan. And you have the coordinates, you have the exact location that you're supposed to go, the, the exact direction in degrees. You know, you're supposed to go, I don't know, 263.2 degrees, you know, west, and it'll get you there. Well, if you're just half a degree off when you leave Spain, you land in Florida instead of Manhattan. I, I, I don't know that that's accurate. I'm just giving an example here. You just have to be off a little bit to land in a completely different spot. And that is exactly what these people do. That's their whole goal. That's what they do for a living. Twist things around and make it look just a little bit different than it actually is. If they can make it look just a little bit different, then they can, they can lead their audience to a completely different place. Yeah, trust or confidence in newspapers and television news is down between 1993 and 2020. That's true but they most definitely manipulated these statistics. Look, look at that this doesn't come as a shock to any of us how far trust has dropped. I remember uh, <clears throat> growing up in my house, you know, when we did get the newspaper, we believed it because uh, most of the time the newspaper was accurate. Yeah. And it's not that way anymore, not that way. Dutch, when you see this, uh, what what tact should we take on all of this with the Twitter and the social media? How, how should Christians respond to this? Well, I, I agree with what Rob said a while ago. We, we must speak, but, and we should take every opportunity we can, every avenue. Uh, it's not good or evil. It, it's, it's, it's either, is it true or not true? There is a reason, there is a good reason, there is an important essential reason why our founders said this is the first amendment. This is number one, freedom to speak. Actually, the first sentence in the first amendment is Congress will make no law establishing religion or, or integrating religion into public life in any way. Um, they love to ignore that one though, of course. And we should not abdicate it at any point. We should do it in every way possible. We should no longer be catching, uh, playing catch up, TV, social media, radio, every possible way we can. We need to be delivering the message of truth, of hope. 
We are the salt and light, Gene. We must do that. We must shine the light. We must sprinkle the salt. We don't have to be mean-spirited to do it. We're accused of it, but we're not. We love people, but we will not be silenced. And the early church said, hey, you can tell us not to talk all you want to, but God said do it. We're going to do it. Dude, these guys are absolutely unhinged from reality, first of all. Second, they most definitely do spread hate intentionally. They want to hate people for who they are, for intrinsic qualities about them. They like to pretend that they're not sexist, that they're not racist, that they're not hateful in any way. They most definitely are. That's right. And, you, you know, Martin Luther knew what he was doing. Uh Martin Luther, for those who are unfamiliar, is the guy who created Protestantism, basically. He famously nailed, uh, what, 99 theses, I think, to a wall. Uh, of a church or to the door of a church or something like that. And the whole idea was that you shouldn't need a priest to, you know, reach God, basically. Your relationship with God should, between, should be between you and God himself. That's the idea behind what Martin Luther was saying. I assume that's who he's referring to here. Uh, when he nailed those 96 theses to the Wittenberg door, he knew what was happening and what that was going to do. And I, I love the tenacity, but this is the reason we can look back and take uh, take a listen hey, to what, what they've done. Yes, sir, go ahead, Rob. I was gonna, I was gonna uh, add something that Dutch had pointed out. Uh, I love the fact he brings up the First Amendment because encapsulated in that First Amendment is not just freedom of speech, but it's the freedom of the press and the freedom of religion. And when our founders gave us the, the, the clarity that we're the sovereign of the nation in the first three words of the preamble of the Constitution, we the people of the United States. After they made us the sovereign, then they gave us the ability to elect only one body of the three branches, which was the lower house, the, the congressional seats. They would appoint the Senate and then the Electoral College, the president, and the president would appoint justices. What? No, that's not exactly correct. This is... Okay, it seems like a little thing, but again, you start off in Spain, you're just half a degree off, you end up in Florida. This is... It, it feels like an attempt to slowly erode democracy, reframe democracy to be something other than what it is. The people should not, or do not, or the Founding Fathers didn't want the people to elect the president. The Electoral College is supposed to do that, not the people. It's just one little thing at a time, you know? One small change here or there. Absolutely fascinating how they justify all this stuff to themselves, right? And how they convince others to believe the things that they say. The reason why the Congress gave us the ability to elect the lower house was because they controlled the purse strings. They were the most powerful branch of government. And then, as eloquent as the Declaration of Independence is, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary, and then the preamble of the Constitution, we the people of the United States are poetic and beautiful, but the first 16 words of the First Amendment are prohibitive and angry. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, nor prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Right. So I don't even know if this guy is aware of this or not, but the Constitution is a permission slip. For the government. It is basically a description of things that the government is allowed to do or what they're specifically not allowed to do. And the government is not allowed to automatically control anything beyond what is dictated in the Constitution. Basically, that, that, that was the idea behind it originally. Now, the, the Declaration of Independence was a f you to King George, I believe. It was just... You know, we are splitting off and creating our own government, and if you don't like it, you can heck right off. That that was the idea behind the Declaration. It's not a founding document. The Declaration of Independence is just them saying we're breaking off from you guys and creating our own country. So one is a legal document that outlines how the government operates, and the other, being poetic as he described it, was just a f*** you to King George, I think. It was King George, wasn't it? I think it was. Yeah, King George the Third. Don't you dare get in the way of God and man, ever. And freedom of speech... Hold on now. Don't get in the way of God and man? Actually, I think it was saying the government has no place to integrate God into it. That's really what was being said. And 
Congress will not get in the way of religion. Basically, stay out of religion and religion will stay out of us, too. That's basically what the founding document said. That's what the Constitution was saying. But again, you know, just twist things around a little bit to make it just to skew it, just a hair, and you end up in a completely different spot. Each is to be protected, and if the press is silent and the pulpits are silent, the people no longer have counselors, and the king needs counselors and the president needs a cabinet. And if we're the sovereign and we lose the press and we lose the pulpit, we're rudderless. Amen. Amen. So good. We want you to be educated. We want you to be aware. We want you to know how to fight. We want you to know how to stand up. We want you to know how to respond to this situation. I, I announced something on Tuesday. And guys, I think I will play that video uh, from Rick Green. We're partnering up with Rick Green on our our meetings coming up, Facebook, Facebook, Flashpoint live events in 2023. And I want you to see, we have been inspirational. We've been evangelistic. None of that's going to change. But what you are going to get in these two-day events starting next year is we're going to train you. We're going to educate you. And this isn't going to be difficult. You're going to be able to learn in a very short time. You're going to take tangible evidence away from you away from there on how you can respond where you live. It does us no good to just have a bunch of people show up in a meeting. You've got to, you must take something back with you. That's our goal. We want to educate, inspire, but we want to equip you as well when you leave in 2023. I want to show you what Rick Green, Constitution Coach, Patriot Academy, and Flashpoint are doing together. Watch. Yeah, Rick Green is a common guest on this TV show. And as he said, he runs a, I think it's a nonprofit called Patriot Academy. Dude is a complete nutter butter to the core. Uh, he's terrible in every way. And he has like what you would, or what he calls biblical citizenship training. He is, he is absolutely unhinged. I, I just don't know how else to say it. He's terrible in every way. Rick Green is. Let's listen. If you love America. That's him right there. Yeah, and you're concerned about the culture crumbling around us, this message is for you. My name is Rick Green. I'm the founder of Patriot Academy and America's Constitution Coach. And we at Patriot Academy are picking up the pieces of that crumbling culture and rebuilding the walls, just like in the book of Nehemiah. That's our job as Bible-believing Christians, to be salt and light in the culture. When we're salt and light, the culture flourishes. When we recede, the culture crumbles. And that's why teaching biblical citizenship is needed in every community in every home. Make a tax deductible donation of any amount you want at biblicalcivics.com and I will give you this entire eight week power pack course for free. I'm asking you to help us. Make a donation. I'll give it to you for free. Well, that's not really a donation then, is it? That's kind of a financial transaction seems to me, but okay. Train the nation on biblical precepts like how to treat your neighbor and how to protect freedom of religion. But I also want you to learn these things and teach them to your family and your friends. Dude, I should get a copy of this stuff, right? That would be awesome. But I don't want them to have my name and credit card number. That's all. We have a responsibility to care for what we've been given. Join me at biblicalcivics.com. All right. So you say, well, Gene, why are you pushing somebody else's product? Because we have to come together in this. It's not about selling DVDs or books. Ladies and gentlemen. That is exactly what it's about. Are you kidding me? We have to understand. We were thinking, oh, we need to develop this. And I was thinking, well, how are we going to do this? And then we're like, wait a minute. Rick Green has already done this with Kirk. has been involved as well. And this is what's going to come out. So if you noticed, biblicalcivics.com, you can make a donation of any amount, any amount, he said, and you can get the download. If you want to buy the actual tangible product, uh, you know, I think there's a charge for that. But you can go to the, go to the website and change. The reason why am I pushing this now instead of at the event? It's good for you to get this now. You're going to get more information at an event so that you go home equipped and you understand what to do when you go back from a Flashpoint event. Because we've, if anything, the midterms has shown us, we still have a lot more work to do. And I know you're going to be there with it. All right. So make sure you go check it out. Uh, and we want to see you at every Flashpoint event coming up. But we're going to be December 17th. Just around the corner, we're going to be right there in Phoenix at America Fest with Charlie Kirk. Uh, Pastor Rob will be there. 
I want to make sure you make, if you, it's not too late. If you want to go, be there. You can go to amfest.com, find out all the information. A lot of great speakers uh, will be there on the floor. Come back. Okay, now I guess they're just advertising for their stuff. Yeah, these people are absolutely unhinged, dude. Some of the stuff they say is nuts. I don't know how else to say it. It's absolutely nuts. Let me know what you think about this one. If you want to see more stuff like this in the comments, I think it's deeply entertaining personally.